hello friends welcome back to my channel here in this video today we are going to discuss how to design a research questionnaire in descriptive cross section study but we need to discuss few more aspects of the research that is the types of the research types of data a statistical analysis test and analysis tools to be used in the research questionnaire design so basically there are two main types of study number one is observational study in the observational study we got case in the case we got we describe only one sample set and then we got case control in the case control we have at least two subsets one got the disease and other does not cross-sectional study which is the most important topic in our video which analyzes the data from a population or the representative subset at a specific point in time then the cohort study we watch over time in this study the group of the people and follow them over a period of time to see how their exposure affect their outcomes the second type of study is experimental study in this case the subjects are subjected to treatments or intervention is based on pre-designated plan Further in experimental studies, we got self-control studies. Here in this case, we got two groups. One is treatment group and one is control group. Data is collected before and after the intervention, which is also called as swapping. Then we have external control. Here the participants receive the intervention and the result of this study is compared with an external source studies, which is also called as pre-published studies. And then we have uncontrolled trials. In this case, uh, what happens? Uh, both the participant receives the intervention, but there is no control. We should also know the concept of randomization. When every participant of the research is selected randomly, mean he is getting an equal chance to be selected in the study. This is called randomization. While blinding when the participant doesn't know either he's in the treatment group or control group while when the principal investigator doesn't know this is called double blinding types of data basically there are two types of data number one is the numerical data and categorical data numerical data is made up of numbers such as age weight etc then it further divided into continuous and discrete data then we got categorical data which is further divided into ordinal and nominal nominal is the name of anything and ordinal is the statement the important step for the selection of right test for the analysis of our research if we have qualitative data and the sample size is less than 30 or uh, we have to compare one to two groups then we employ z test if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 and the groups are more than two to be compared then we use chi square test the chi square test also implied on categorical numerical data on the other side we have qualitative data if the sample size is less than 30 and we have one uh, we have one group then we use one sample t-test if we have two groups we, we use un unpaired t-test and if the sample size is greater than 30 and we have more than two groups then we use ANOVA test there are many tools uh, used for the analysis of the research the top 10 included Microsoft Excel, RapidMiner, Taylor, Nine. SAS, R Python, Apache Spark, ClickView, Power BI, Tableau, but I will suggest my favorite one, the SPSS. So why we conduct descriptive cross-sectional studies? What are the benefits of the descriptive cross-sectional studies? Because uh, it identifies a population or subpopulation rather than individuals. It takes place uh, point over time of uh, it can be conducted for a short period of time and this can measure the range of variables across the groups at the same time and the most important is that this often conducted in the form of survey and this can be quick effective and easy for the collection of information and can be included uh, in the case control or cohort studies commonly uh, used to measure the prevalence outcome in epidemiological studies and this also commonly used to assess knowledge perception and opinions so before jumping towards the questionnaire formulation there are a few important steps to be considered 
first of all we make the consent form and then we take the demographic data then there will be open and closed ended questions so the first step is topic selection for example uh, I have selected a descriptive cross-section study assessing the knowledge, attitude, perception of doctors toward the management of dengue fever in Pakistan. So followed by our topic we have selected for the assessment and perception. Our questionnaire must contains the following sections. Number one, consent form of confidentiality. Number second is the demographic data. And then we will go for the management of dengue then factors affecting for the treatment of dengue and diagnosing of the disease then we will have the question about the preventive measures and then finally the treatment now we just getting started to make our consent form in the consent form first of all we write the title of the study as we have previously selected and then the name of the principal investigator who is conducting the research then introduction about the research that is my name is this and that I'm conducting this research then give a background information about a certain disease or the topic you have selected for your study and what is the purpose of your study I mean why are you conducting this study and what would be your procedure for conducting this study then possible risk factors then you have to state there is either the risk or benefit then write of refusal to participate or withdraw and then uh, consent of confidentiality and finally authorization and signature of the principal investigator and the party spent so demographic data is the first section after the consent form in this section we asked about the gender age group qualification department sector either private public whatsoever city and work experience so in the section 2 you may start with the Likert scale uh, just asking the uh, general questions about the management of dengue just I have used. You may also select the questions of your choice just like I have selected the few of them like dengue is well controlled with antiviral vaccine in Pakistan and so on. Similarly in the section 3 you may ask the closed ended questions like a scale or open ended questions just like the uh, factors affecting on the treatment like the generalized behavior, cultural behavior and lack of awareness and many more questions. Respectively in the section 4 you are more specific about your topic by assessing the knowledge as well as you taking the opinion with the closed end questions. Just like you can read out the questions I have prepared with the valid questions. I'm going to read out the question number 5 like do you think that the TPOs like interleukin 11 and thrombopagromic lostem are the only drug of choice to reduce thrombocytopenia. Similarly in the section 5 we just going to ask about the prevention of the dengue with the closed ended questions like avoiding mosquito bite and here we are taking the opinion of a doctor about the prevention. Section number 6 you may ask the doctor doctor's opinion for the treatment of dengue patients and in this case we may use the Likert scales closed ended questions. You must be aware that the question you use should be fully validated with a strong background and in the last section we use probing questions open-ended questions here we give the choice that the participant can make his own choice of answering so guys thank you so much for watching my video and uh, giving your precious time all this effort are for my mentees and for my followers keep visiting my videos because in the next videos I will show you how to validate all these questions or how to validate the questionnaire Goodbye.